Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the show. My name is Ziri Tiola. Now our first feature is on a young individual who has several incarnations. Some of you know him as a dancer, while others know him as a designer, and many have experienced him as a choreographer. I have had the singular pleasure and privilege of experiencing him in all these capacities, and I can tell you for free, he is an ace at every single one of them. My name is Paolo Ciciano, and I run the fashion brand Ciciano, and I'm also a theater performer. I'm half Nigerian, half Italian. My mom is from Akwaibom. So my dad is Italian, that's why I have the Italian names. Growing up was mostly in Nigeria. I went to school in Lagos and Ogun State, and then Lagos again, University of Lagos. I studied textile design after I decided to be a designer. I always thought I was going to be a singer, and you know, right after school, I was like, oh, what next? I don't know what I'm going to study in university, because I know I'm going to sing. <laughs> I started learning dance in 2008. I never thought I was going to dance before then. A friend was doing a dance rehearsal. And I spoke to the instructor, I said, can I try? And she was like, you, if you want to. And I tried, of course, I messed up a lot of the steps, but they had been practicing for two months. But she saw something, she said, my facial expression, I looked like even though I wasn't getting the steps, I could be doing a show. And I got into that production and it was a competition and we won. Right after winning that competition, I got into Spirit of David, which is a gospel dance group. And that's where my journey started from. The big break came when, when um, Bolan Lost in Peter's production kicked off with Saro in 2013. I went in as a choreographer, dance choreographer, and when I got there, the director said, oh no, you should try out for the acting. I'm like, I gave up on acting. I don't act anymore. I'm a dancer. No one ever thinks that I can act. First thing they say is the color. And he said, no, no, try out. And then I tried out, and I was one of the main characters for the show. I think that the first thing that ever drew me to fashion is my mother. So I grew up with a single mother, that is very fashionable, extremely. So my mother would just lay on clothes. And as a growing child, you'd be like, mommy, <laughs> what are you wearing? And she would make me dress up and say, everything should be tucked in. So if I was wearing shorts, my shirt would be tucked in. If I was wearing jeans, my shirt would be tucked in. She just always liked being proper. And if, I'd be looking at pictures from when she was pregnant with me, and my mother was still wearing pencil skirts. She would have like a shirt tied here. She just looked so elegant. And I felt like the age where we were as a people when I started designing, I'd lost the classic beauty of a woman. It was more about, oh, are we showing this body here? It has to be so tight. I go with my mother always being, there always had to be material. So there was nothing clingy anywhere, but there was so much sassiness. And for me, it was, I don't know if it was how confident she carried it. She would have like shoulder pads and then there would just be fabric. I would just be like, more, when looking at her pictures, I would be like, mommy, how did you wear this thing? So I just wore it, I just bought it. You know, it was, it was that that I felt like was missing. Every time I saw my mother, from pictures to real life, she just looked like she was comfortable first. And she was having a good time. Now going back to dance, it was the same application. I felt like theater here yeah, never really saw costuming as a big deal. So if, for example, just like, oh, what do we have? This, this, this. And then we'll be watching videos and watching shows on YouTube. You'll see the costume is so elaborate. And ah, I said, no, if I'm doing anything for anybody, <laughs> production-wise, and I'm handling costume, it has to feel like the costume 
makes the production. So if you take the costume and just kept it aside, it should tell its own story regardless. So it's not just, oh, so there's this piece of cloth, let's just wear this. No, it's deliberate, it's meant to pass a message. And I'd been doing a few sketches at home here and there, but I never thought it was for fashion design. And then a few friends came around, Bio Kelawao happens to be one of them, Orange Culture, Za, and, and then they were like, ah, Paolo, what are all these sketches doing about? I was like, ah, I don't know, I just sketch randomly. He said, then you should, you can't be doing random and you have a full file of sketches. So you might as well just start designing. And I said, I'll just start designing like that. People that have been doing 15 years, 10 years, they've not made it to design it. <laughs> I'll just start. And he said, no, but if you have like an eye, then why not try? Eventually, I took, I took the advice, and I used my savings to do the first collection, 11-piece collection. I got a good photographer. My sister modeled the piece, and she called another friend. We shot the little book, and I got in for Lagos Fashion and Design Week. A friend had put the picture up, and they said, that guy has to come in for the Young Designers Prize. I got the email, and though I didn't win competition, I showed and the business has moved from there. The Siciano brand is very classic, modern at the same time, and adventurous in the way that it flows because of the movement that comes with the fabric. Who wears the brand? I expect that anyone wearing a Siciano mustn't feel overwhelmed. So first things first, you have to be very confident and very comfortable with yourself and with the person that you are. And you need to kind of follow suit with who you're becoming, because every day we evolve. Each time a Siciano piece is worn, it's about going on that journey with you. And it takes a lot to be on any journey. So it's very deliberate that you find yourself first in order not to be overwhelmed. The type of fabric that I would always be drawn to must flow. <laughs> I can try working with structure, but we have to create some form of movement and fluidity somewhere. There's no point in a lady entering a space and she does a turn and there's not something that turns with her. I'm a dance major, I do contemporary. There always has to be a flow. So we can have like a structured jacket, but underneath has to be layers that just move. Because when a woman enters a space, you have to see her and acknowledge that she's there. Even when you're not looking, you should feel that something passed you. I think that the Nigerian woman is not necessarily a fashion person. She's a trend follower. Instead of finding their own style and building that and saying, okay, this piece works, this piece. They just go with the buzz. Oh, is this designer? And everybody's there. Is this style? And everybody's there. The two common mistakes that I find Nigerians make in terms of fashion, color choice and style choice. 
and that's cause I might be wearing yellow, but it's not great on my skin tone. Someone else might be wearing it and it looks amazing. So you should know yourself. To a young person that is passionate and ambitious is that at the end of the day, it's a lot of push. If you see that this is what you want to do, you just need to, that is what I need to get done. It is very difficult at the end of the day. You're not your typical, if you're passionate about something, you don't let it die. So you're up at night thinking, ah, what am I going to do? How are you going to get these coins together? And nothing ever starts big. You need to start small. So if your dream is to do a car, start with drawing <laughs> the car and looking at engines and saying, okay, this is this, this is that. You don't need money for that. You just need paper and biro. If I could do one thing to fix Nigeria, it would be to help people dream again. I would never cheat to get ahead. Style is personal. Three things that can impede anyone's journey to success. The first one is self, money, pride. A woman should never wear flats to an occasion. Never. Be it with shorts, be it with pants, never wear flats. Except you're going to the grocery store. How can so much reside in just one person? And I do have to say that Tiziano is responsible for some of my more spectacular red carpet moments. Okay, we're going to be back after the break and we'll bring you our second feature of the day. I've often said that winning is one thing, sustaining that win is quite another. Now, beauty queens have come and gone, but this one remains evergreen. Ever since she dropped her crown as the most beautiful girl in the year 2005, she has remained relentless, continuing to reinvent herself into an Amazon and a powerhouse that she is today.
My name is Omaomi Akini Fessi, and I'm now a fashion entrepreneur, um, a fashion ready to wear brand, Omaomi Ready to Wear. I studied geography and regional planning at the University of Lagos, and um, I followed that up with a master's in environmental modeling, monitoring, and management at King's College London. I've, I've always had a passion for the environment, but when I finished my master's, um, being in class with people that you know, th th that had a level 50 um, height of, of passion than I did. I realized that this is something I really love, but then there's something else I love as well, which is fashion. So after my master's at King's College London, I went to London College of Fashion to study fashion. Going in for the pageant in the first place, I wanted to change lives. I wanted people to see me as someone that was doing something with being a beauty queen and not just being a pretty face. After winning the crown, I realized that it, you know, it was such a huge platform and pedestal that I had to do something about it. I had to affect lives as long as possible. So I thought to myself, um, I'm going to make something out of it, and not only for myself, but I wanted to be that person that people would see and say, even if she was a beauty queen, she's not just a pretty face, but she's very well educated um, and she's industrious. I wanted to be that person, and that's what has inspired me, and that's what has made me come this far with um, ed educating myself and um, constantly grooming myself to be this woman that hopefully is a role model. If you're a young girl and you're so beautiful and you're thinking about depending um, solely on your looks to get ahead in life, um, your looks will get you will possibly get you through the door, but it won't keep you. It won't keep you in that door. So you have to, at some point, um, constantly um, give yourself more content, have content in your character and not just your looks. Because it's, it, the world is, is just very dynamic. And even if you're beautiful, people still want to talk to you and you have something inside, you have something to offer. Come from somewhere deeper within yourself. Winning the crown, I would, I would change nothing. I would change nothing. Um, if, if anything, I, I may not be as safe as I, as I wanted to be. I, would be. I may be a little bit more, um, um, would I say, how, how do I put it? Well, I've always, it's worked for me regardless. I wouldn't change anything. It's worked for me, and that's what has brought me to where I am now. Um, Omoomi Ready to Wear brand is a fashion brand for a woman with a social lifestyle. Um, we have our age bracket, and, but it's just for a woman that knows who she is. Most of our things go from day to night. I have a team that I work with. However, this, this, I feel like this is my baby and this, because I have a wonderful passion for it and it's about style and design and creativity. I'm 100% all the way, from the design process, to sketching, to the fabric choices, to the factory, and dealing with everyone, I'm all the way. So I deal with everything. People often as associate comfort with um, homeware or just plain casual wear. Um, however, this kind of comfort is a, a woman that, you know, she goes out, she still looks very decent, very elegant, very beautiful, and she doesn't look like she's trying too hard. 
the, she's wearing the clothing, the clothing is not wearing her. However, each piece is still speaking as she walks into a room. And that's my personal style. And I wanted to reflect that in the Omomi ready to wear brand clothing. I think um, um, the, the young Nigerian woman is, is a go-getter. She's very hardworking. And I think women have just woken up all of a sudden. Women have be become um, a force to be reckoned with. We are finding ourselves. Back in the day, our mothers used to be all about um, being in the kitchen, really. And, um, but now, things are different. We do that as a baseline, but then there's more now. If I could do one thing to fix Nigeria, I think that, that one thing, I really would wish that one thing to just be a magical wand. And that wand would be to change the minds of the people, to, to change our mindset. That's all we need to do. Um, changing the mindset comes with educating ourselves more. However, educating, educating yourself more, it takes a lot of time. Um, and it's a lot of time to build. And because it's about people and human beings, as you're trying to change the mind of this person, this other person doesn't want to change. You know, so we're always afraid of evolving as human beings in Nigeria. Um, so that's what I would change. I would want to change the mindset of the people so that we can act differently. I think we just, some people don't want to see others do well. Some people see you do well and they want to drag you back. That's human beings in general. However, I've noticed that in our country, it, it may be a little bit more rampant. However, um, we're good people inside. We're really good people. But then I think it's our mindset that needs to change, um, the way we approach things. Um, I would never compromise my integrity. Style to me is, is you. It's expressing yourself. It's expressing who you are and, and your personality and even maybe sometimes your character. Two things I think can impede success is pride. Um, when, you're, when you're too proud, you be, become stagnant. You hold yourself back from so many things. I would say pride and, and ignorance. Personal philosophy of life is, it's never too late to be who you could have been. A journey of a million miles starts with one step and never compare yourself to others. You heard the lovely lady, a pretty face will fade away and that goes for both male and female. So let me ask you, what more are you bringing to the table? Okay, so we come to the end of today's edition of the show. Now you know what to do. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let's know what you think. Let's know what you feel. We'll be glad to interact with you. Now until I come your way with another exciting edition of the show, look after yourselves and let's be kind to one another. <laughs>